These are most of the plants that are going to be making the air breathable while I'm sealed in a jar for three days. I planted the seeds for these about a month ago and they've come a long way, but I hope to do this experiment before November, about a month from now. So they've got a long way to go. So yesterday I built this. It's a tiny little greenhouse and I'm hoping that it'll allow them to stay a little warmer thanks to the greenhouse effect. I planted corn, beans, squash, and sunflowers because they photosynthesize differently and they use nutrients differently, so I think it'll be a good diverse set. I also planted a potato for this experiment since I'm a huge fan of the Martian, and I am going to be bringing in Sir Stabbington, the cactus, into the box with me as well. There's also going to be a few trees because I've realized that uh, these plants are probably still going to be too small to just do all of the oxygen creation on their own. So I'm going to bring in some trees. If you're wondering how all of this is going to fit in the box, there's two ways. One is that I've actually decided to upgrade my box size from an 8 foot cube to a 10 foot cube which doesn't sound like a big difference, and in terms of floor space, it isn't a big difference, but it's going to double the volume of the air. I'm doing that because I've done the math a bunch of different ways, and I'm kind of nervous that I won't even make it to day two with an eight-foot cube. Uh, and that extra space alone, even if there's no plants in there, that extra space will give me the time, give the plants the time to actually make an ecosystem that is a little more sustainable. So it's still going to be close. Uh, it's going to be really close to see if I can actually make it to the end of day three. I'm not making this experiment to be super robust in that sense. I'm making it an experiment uh, that's going to be really interesting. <laughs> the other way I'm going to fit all of these plants into that space is that it's going to be really, really tight. I'm going to have a walking space roughly the size of a bathtub. So I'm going to kind of lose my mind in there a little bit because I'll be stuck in that space for three days. Um, but I'm going to figure it out. So this is not the final resting place for these plants. This is just a sort of preparation zone. I'm just getting them ready to go in the box. Okay, so I really, really love plants. And what I think might be the coolest thing about them is that they get their mass, all of their matter, almost all of it, is from CO2. It's from the air we breathe. So when we breathe, we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. But plants, they take in carbon dioxide, and that's how they make their stems and their leaves and their roots. And then they breathe out, so to speak, oxygen. And that cycle between us and them continues. And I'm going to be relying on that cycle to stay alive in my jar. If I was sealed in a jar without plants, it wouldn't be lack of oxygen that killed me. It would be the buildup of CO2 that would lead to my suffocation. Hopefully that doesn't happen because I have plants and they love CO2. It's a month away. Uh, I'm getting a little nervous already. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. You can follow this on Twitter and all the places on the internet using the hashtag Curtis in a Jar. Subscribe for more. Like this video. Do all the things that you do on the internet. And as always, thanks so much for watching.